If you're looking to add a payment subscription feature in your Bubble app using Stripe, then this is the video you've been looking for. In this video, you'll learn how to add a paywall into your application, which will prompt users to upgrade to a paid subscription account, from which your users can then subscribe to a fortnightly, monthly, or yearly plan. Now this complete guide is going to cover everything you need to know about integrating Stripe subscriptions into your Bubble app, and of course, all of this is going to be done without writing a single line of code. Not only are you going to learn how to structure your database to support subscription payments, but we're going to teach you the exact steps to integrate Stripe into your Bubble app, which of course includes sourcing your own Stripe API keys. We'll explain how you can build a paywall in your app, how you can create custom product subscription tiers within your own Stripe account, the workflows you need in order to actually process a subscription payment, followed by a way in which customers can either upgrade, downgrade, or even cancel their subscription payments. And then of course, a ton of additional insights to help you stitch all of this together. So that way you can start charging subscriptions within your own bubble app. Show me the money! Now look, there's so much that we need to cover within this tutorial today. So I'm gonna hand this one over to James and he's gonna walk you through the exact steps you need to follow. Hello, James here. And in this tutorial, we're gonna look at how to monetize your bubble application and take payments through Stripe. So I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration of what that might look like in your application. And we're gonna go through these set of actions here. So here's the first one, I'm just gonna give you a quick demo. So I'm in my app, I'm gonna log in as a person who does not have a subscription. Log in, it's gonna take me through to a subscription page. I'm going to select the monthly one. It's going to take me through to a checkout. I'm going to put some payment details in and then press subscribe. So it's going to process that payment. It's going to be successful. I get a further notification from Bubble that the payment has been successful. Press OK and it's going to navigate me through to you know a page in my application. So this person signed up for a monthly subscription. In fact, let's just double check what's happened here. So this um, record has been generated in my database. So let's just open it up. So there's Anna, uh, made the payment. It's a monthly subscription and she's an active subscriber. Uh, so in here now, let's say this Anna has been using the app for a while and she thinks, hey, this is good. I want to change it to an annual subscription. So click on this button. Um, currently on a monthly, I want to go to an annual. Select the yearly plan, continue, confirm. So I have now, Anna has now made uh, a payment. So in, in the Stripe portal, it's saying that she's on an annual gateway pass. If I refresh the data here, this has now changed to a year. The subscription end date has moved to you know a year's time. Still active, and so you know great. What about now? Anna's had enough, and she wants to cancel her subscription. So let's cancel the plan that we're on. Let's cancel. So shown that she's not part of a plan. I go into my bubble database, refresh data, status cancelled. So how did all that happen? Well, that's all we're going to go through in this video. So bear with me for a couple of minutes when I purge my app of anything Stripe related and let's go through uh, these steps together. One eternity later. Okay, so my app is now free from anything Stripe related. So let's go through these in order. First up, we need to set up Stripe. So uh, if you haven't got a Stripe account, you know, go to stripe.com, set up an account, uh, go through just the, the basic elements of setting up the company. Uh, it'll just take you through a, like an onboarding process. And um, eventually you'll get to um, this sort of page here. So you can see I still haven't finished activating um, my my setup, but you know I've got enough access to be able to do what I need to do in Bubble. So 
I've got an option here called products. So let's kick products. And I've got a few existing ones already, but let's add some new ones for the purposes of the demonstration. So let's add, uh, let's call it monthly, can't spell, monthly magic. And this is going to cost £40 a month. Uh, it's a recurring um, subscription and it's going to be taken on a monthly basis. So you, know, you can personalize this quite a bit. You can add images uh, or an image to which, which reflects your product. Uh, you can put in more of a description, but for now, uh, this is good enough. So let's save product. So it takes you through to uh, sort of more information on the product. Note this ID here. So this is uh, identifier for this product in Stripe. We will come to that shortly when we set up our workflows. So just note where that is in terms of your product. So let's click back on product. Let's add a product and let's call this annual magic. Again, I can put in description and whatnot. Uh, let's charge 400 pounds a month, uh, sorry, 400 pounds a year for this product. And so we want to change our billing period to yearly, but you can see, you know, there's different options here. So I'm going to select yearly, save product. And again, just, you know, note uh, that ID there, which is for the product. So in Stripe, you know, set up your business, be sort of personal information in there and everything, um, and then set up the products that you are gonna sell in your Bubble application. So how do we now get Bubble to talk to Stripe? So we need to set up our plugins. So go back into our application, select plugins, click add plugins, and we're going to search for Stripe. And we're going to install two plugins. So there's one here, the Stripe plugin, it's made by Bubble. So let's install that. And then scroll down a bit and you'll see another one called Stripe Customer Portal. So press install on that one too. And so we're done. So here are my two plugins. If I click on the Stripe one, so I've got a lot of empty fields here. So there's some fields for live. We're not interested in those at this point, um, but I do need some development keys so that when Bubble talks to Stripe, you know, Stripe knows that it's my application talking to it. So if we go back to Stripe, you'll see here on the home page, I have some keys here for developers. So the publishable key and the secret key. So obviously keep these to yourself. You don't want these getting into the wrong hands uh, or even the right ones. Just keep them totally safe and secure for your eyes only. So let's click on publishable key. And I know, just, just, just a note, I know I'm in test mode here. Um, so if I activated my account, I could toggle that and go back to live these keys would then be relevant for live, but you know, we're not concerned about that at this stage. So I'm happy. These are my test keys. So let's grab the test publishable key. Go into my application, publishable key development, paste that in, go back into Stripe, grab the secret key, copy that, go into my app, secret key development. And I need one more here. So client ID development, go into Stripe. It's not immediately available. So I have to click view docs. Uh, there's an option here called multi-party payments. So click on that. I scroll down to manage accounts and I click testing. And there's uh, a header here for we'll test the OAuth flow and your development client ID is, and we want to grab that key. So grab that, copy back to my application, paste that in. Uh, and while we're at it, let's 
in our Stripe customer portal, we also need to put in a API key. So this is the secret key. So let's grab the secret key, so the SK, copy back here, and then this actually uses, uh, it wants a prefix, if you like, called bearer. So capital B, type in bearer, space, and then paste in your secret key. One thing to note on the Stripe plugin is just make sure that the Stripe checkout version is the latest version. So version three is the latest one, and that's the one I have selected. So let's go back to our list. So we set up Stripe business the products. We set up the plugins. And now the next bit is to set up uh, our database. So how are we gonna capture you know, our payment information in our application? So go back into my app, click on data. In data types, I'm gonna set up a new table called payments. And there are different ways of capturing uh, the, the sort of payment details. You could attach them to a user, um, or you could attach them to like a, a company field. I think it's just healthy to keep them separate. You may only want, um, you know, some admin from the company accessing it. So just like don't fuse that information with the company information. So have it on a separate uh, table. And the other thing is that this gives you some flexibility. So in our example, we're just gonna have one customer is related to a subscription, but I could put in a new field and have it as a related field, so a company field. And so then I could have it so that users who are part of that company are able to access my app because the subscription is attached, is linked to the company. So it gives you some flexibility if you have a set up in a separate table, uh, so that's what we're going to do, but we are just going to use it for a single user. So that's set up. Uh, you know, obviously make sure your privacy rules are applied. You know, before you go live. Uh, but for now, we're just going to go through the basics needed. So create a new field. Let's set up a new field. So let's do last payment date, and that's going to be a date. Uh, let's have payment frequency. So it's just like a monthly or an annual um, thing. So that's text. Uh, let's get the product ID. So product ID. So let's grab that ID that we saw. So whether it's a, um, a monthly or an annual plan. So create. Uh, let's grab the Stripe customer ID. So this will all be clear as we go along this process. So that again is text. Let's grab the subscription end date. So it's a date. And then really important field, status. So is this person, is this subscriber an active subscriber or has the subscription lapsed and uh, you know, if it has, we want to capture that. That's a really important field. So text create. Okay, so we've set up our bubble payment table. Let's get into the meat of things now and set up the workflows. So I have a, a really simple subscription page set up. So if I go into the design, um, I have a drop down here, and this is. I've got, a, I've got an option set set up and so I have two options to select from in payment frequency. Is it going to be an annual subscription or is it going to be a monthly subscription? So that's really easy to get set up. Uh, and you know, there are different ways of doing this. You could have different buttons um, depending on whether you know it's a monthly or an annual. You, know, different, you could get it to click on an image. So there's multiple ways in terms of user experience. For this example, I've just got the one button and it's gonna do different workflows depending on whether it's a monthly or an annual subscription selected. So on my subscribe button, let's start edit workflow. So click here to add an action. And what we wanna do is if we start search for plan, we wanna subscribe the user to 
a plan. So let's select that. And then we're going to apply this action to the current user. Yes. Uh, we'll untick that. We'll just assume these are all new subscriptions being set up. Um, Stripe plan name. Now, in fact, when I click this, I don't, I think there's actually more in Stripe. So let me just refresh uh, my bubble application because this might be a common thing you see as well. So if you don't see your item there, do a refresh. Uh, grab this box. Yeah, so we can see more and more there now. So let's go into Stripe briefly. Click on our products and monthly magic. So let's click on that and I can see that it's price underscore one LHICY. Uh, price one LHICY. So that is my monthly uh, monthly magic product. So click that. Uh, I just want it to be you know, one. I can put in here a trial period. So I could type in current date time plus seven plus 14 if it's going to be a week or two weeks. Uh, but we're just going to, we're not going to have a trial period uh, in this application. And then I can tick this as well. So do not show success messages. Do not show success message, lots of S's. If I tick that, I can, if I like, um, create a pop-up to say, hey, payment made, and then you know, go, go. the next action will happen in the workflow. But I'll just, I'm just gonna rely on Bubbles built-in notifications, so I'm gonna leave that unticked. So in terms of our app connecting to Stripe, it's using the plugin, it's connecting via those API keys so we can see you know the products that we have on offer and so we now want to be able to capture some information in our bubble database which reflects that purchase that has just been made so the next action we're going to do is data and then create a new thing so type and it's going to be that payments uh, table you set up Let's click add all fields. So the last payment date, in fact, nearly all of these can just be generated as a result of what happened in step one. So this is nice and easy to set up. So result of step one, last payment date is the current period starting date. The payment frequency, uh, result of step one, select items, and then it gives you a few more options is going to be interval. So that's Stripe's name for the frequency. Product ID, result of step one is the plan ID. The status, so this is the really important one. So result of step one, status. This is the only one which isn't as result of step one. So click, and this is going to be current user Stripe customer ID and then the subscription end date so if it's a monthly one it should end from a month from now so result step one current period ending date um, and then this is another really important um, conditional to set up so we only want this record to be created in our database if this step one here if that's successful. So in other words, we want Stripe's payment to be successful. Tell us that it's an active, uh, an active user. And so only create this when step one, the status is, uh, let's drag that up, I can't see, is, oh sorry, status is active. So result of step one, only do this when that status is active. So if the payment fails, you know, don't do this workflow which tells Bubble that this person has a subscription. Okay, and then so if that is successful, we want to, just in terms of user experience, navigate them to the app. Uh, and again, we can go to step two, copy that expression. Uh, step three, 
paste and so you know, only continue on the journey of going through to the main application website uh, page if step one is successful so I just want to do one more thing so when the user logs in so let's go back to our index page so this is the login page good old workflows when login is pressed at the moment it just goes through to the page app but we want to tell our application to be uh, like you know oh hold on this person is not a subscriber send them to the subscription page if they have an active subscription send them to the main application page so let's put that logic in so go to page app only when uh, do a search for uh, payments so add a new constraint so the person who creates that subscription if you like is going to be the current user so created by equals current user close and so it's a list but we're only doing it's going to be the first item because we're going to create that subscription and if we're going to have any changes or cancellations it's just going to keep that one record updated it's not going to generate a new a new record so it's going to be the first item and the status is active so go to that page when if you can find the current user in that payments table and this status is active otherwise go to page go to page subscription and just for efficiency we can copy this expression go to page subscription paste when it's not active so if they even if they're not there just go to page subscription so if they are in the payments table and they don't have an active subscription send them to the subscription page if you can't find them send them to the subscription page so let's see so we set the workflows and now let's demonstrate what that looks like or what happens in our bubble database uh, so we're in our index page here so let's preview that so let's log in as Amy so never been set up this should go to subscription which it does perfect I've got my drop down here but I realize I think I've missed one step so let's just go back to our subscription page yeah okay so I've got a drop down but I've only got one button and so at the moment even if I selected annual it's going to subscribe me to the monthly plan so we need to put a conditional on this workflow so only subscribe to the monthly plan when the monthly plan is selected from the drop down uh, so we need to just set this up so drop down A's value display is uh, get an option so we've got a payment frequency option set, set up so when the drop down value is uh, monthly do this workflow and so what we can do very quickly is copy that workflow paste and then we'll change this from monthly to annual and then in the workflow we can change the plan to the annual plan so in the drop down if you select monthly sign for a monthly plan it sounds really obvious but just you know, talk to the logic in your head if they select the annual plan in the drop down sign them up to the annual plan in stripe so let's just refresh that so i'm going to select the monthly plan now from amy press subscribe let's put my payment details in select some details so press subscribe so this is going to show a success i hope yep i'm going to get the bubble notification saying it was successful i've been subscribed to the plan press ok and now it should navigate me through to the app perfect and in terms of what's happened in our database so we click on app data 
let's go to payments and let's open this record up so Amy uh, has made a payment she's on a monthly plan she's an active subscriber and you can see the 14th of October so currently the subscription is going to end the following month um, and so Stripe will try and take a payment again in a month's time remember we set up recurring billing so great that that worked as we wanted it to so demonstrate taking a payment but what about now if Amy is enjoying the app on her monthly plan and she's like oh I feel like saving a bit of money I'm going to sign up to the uh, annual plan or she has a change of heart and thinks I don't really like this application I want to cancel my my subscription so what does she do in that case so let's go back to our list next thing we're going to do is set up a portal workflow so let's go into stripe and while we're in stripe let's just just double check that payment so you can see amy signed up and in subscriptions is a, a live subscription amy so great but in our uh, search bar type in portal so customer portal is what we want and this is the this is where you can configure the portal that the customer goes into so you, know, you can change the appearance of this you can put in your company's branding put in more information about your business some key things that we want to allow the user to do is to cancel their subscription so I'm going to toggle that for our purposes we're just going to do cancel immediately and then we're also going to allow the user to update their subscription so let's tick that uh, so you know it does what it says on the tin so to speak so it's going to allow the customer to switch to a different pricing plan the key thing to note here is that you have to add the products that you're going to offer when a person changes their plan so we're going to allow our user to switch between annual and monthly sorry so I've put in my two products I'm going to allow them to switch to I've allowed them to cancel uh, I'm happy with everything else so let's press save so how is Amy going to access that portal so in our app here let's just create a button quickly so let's select app in our design let's grab a uh, button so send that over to the right I think I can change it to the same style so oh, there we go so let's call that um, manage subscription that looks good to me so on there let's start edit workflow and recall that in our plugins we set up the Stripe customer portal so in the workflow uh, start searching for portal and you can see here self service portal Stripe portal and in this top field here insert dynamic data and what we're going to need is current users uh, where is it stripe customer ID so that is how stripe is going to know who is you know checking their subscription and you know to change the plan so that customer ID you know could be associated to a company if you're allowing multiple users always a risk with that but you know that's that's the association that you have there and then the next action is going to be if you search for external so we're going to want to open an external website and this is going to be a dynamic link so insert dynamic data so result of step one and it's going to be the URL so on the basis of the customer ID you know all the parameters or whatever are going to be in that URL so grab that unique URL and then take it to their portal so let's test that in operation so refresh it's got a page here so I'm logged in as Amy let's press manage subscription and so Amy 
here she is, Amy at test.com, monthly magic. And here I have the option to update the plan or cancel the plan. So uh, let's let's cancel the plan, shall we? Let's press cancel, cancel plan. And notice I've got no option to go back to the page I came from. Um, so in our plugin, Stripe Custom Portal, you'll see an option here for Stripe Portal Return URL. So this is the URL that um, there's going to be a link in that portal. Your user is going to click on that when they've made their changes and they're happy, and it'll take them back to this page um, in the app. So what is that page going to be? Let's just say it's the dashboard page for now. So grab that URL in the Stripe portal, do that link. So if I now press refresh the app, I click on manage subscription. So it's Amy, she's not signed up to anything, but you can now see that there's a, a link here. So I'm going to press that and I'll go back, back into my uh, main dashboard page. But what has happened in our bubble database? So in Stripe, if I click on payments, subscriptions, click on cancelled, I can see that Amy has cancelled her subscription. But in Bubble, if I go to my data, I press refresh data, it's still shown as active. So this is a major risk. You know, Amy has cancelled the subscription. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to stop receiving payment for this customer. But currently, this still shows an active user, and so they're able to use the application. So, how uh, do we get Stripe to talk back to us in order to, you know, tell our application like, "Whoa, you know, this person has cancelled. You know, maybe you should do something about it." So, we're gonna do these steps now: set up a backend workflow and a webhook in Stripe. So you'll need uh, a personal plan at the minimum in order to be able to do this. Uh, just remember, you know, in order to be able to do backend workflows, you can't do it on the free plan. So assuming you have uh, the plan, or just remember as well, when you set up a new app in Bubble, um, when you log in, I think for the second time into that application, uh, it gives you the option, usually uh, as of today's day anyway, to have like a 10 day trial. So that's you know our way of getting access without paying for a short period of time to be able to test this stuff out. Uh, but for now, let's press back end workflows. So I'm in my back end workflows and I'm gonna set up new API workflow. So let's call this Stripe dash hook. And there's a couple of options here that I need to make sure are enabled. So expose the public API, yes. This can be run without authentication, yes. We don't want to put a barrier in Stripe's way when it talks back to us. Same thing with privacy rules. We just want, <clears throat> we don't want any barrier for this key information which is going to come back from Stripe. So this workflow is going to be triggered with post. Um, just accept that as true. We don't have to go into the explanation. And then in terms of uh, the parameter definition, uh, click the drop down and then detect request data. So, detect data. So, Bubble now is, if you like, in listening mode. It's, it's ready to receive something from Stripe in order that it can define, it, it, it knows what it's going to receive in terms of all the different fields. So, let's copy that link. So, just click on it, it's copied. And let's go into Stripe and type in webhooks. So I'm in my uh, webhooks web hooks section, sorry. And I'm going to press this thing, add, press this button rather, add an endpoint. And so the endpoint URL is that URL that we copied from Bubble. And then in terms of a description, uh, we don't need one. And then the key thing here is select events. So this is Stripe. Stripe is asking now, which events do you want to trigger data being sent back to this 
um, API link. So select events, and you can see here that there's, there's lots of options available to us. At this stage, we're interested in two. So we want to capture, uh, where is it? When a customer subscription is deleted, so when they cancel, we want to capture that and change our database. And then we also want to change uh, our database when a customer changes from one plan to another. So if they move from a monthly to an annual, you know, we want to capture that and update our database accordingly. So we've set up those two events. Let's move this image a sec. So add those two and then add endpoint. So now we need to push some data into bubble. So I know I have this here. I need to just set up another subscription quickly so I can cancel it within Stripe. So you'll see what I mean here now. So let's log out. Uh, who have I got? Bob at test.com. So he doesn't have a subscription. Let's set up a monthly one. Let's go this quickly. Okay, so put in our payment details. That was successful. Confirmation, it's gonna navigate. Okay, so in Stripe, uh, we've got Bob, subscription. Let's move that again, and here we've got Bob. So in Bubble now, we want to go into our API workflow and then press detect data. So, you know, we put it back in listening mode and we're gonna force something back. So cancel, cancel subscription. And if I go back into the app, here we go. So it's answered, so it was listening, an event happened, uh, event happened rather, and in bubble, it's answered. So we've got a few things that we just wanna change initially. So we've got current period end, so that's been stored as a number at the moment. We want to have that as a date so, and pick the Unix one. Same for period start, date, Unix. Um, I think that is good for now. So let's press save and let's go back to them. Okay, this thing always trips me up, but in Stripe, go back to our webhooks. And we want to amend this webhook address now. So click on the ellipsis here, update details, and we want to delete this initialized word. So that was just like the initial um, comms link, if you like. The one that is going to use to, like the tunnel is going to use to send uh, information down is this sort of modified URL. So delete that initialize, update endpoint, and now uh, this is good to go from Stripe's point of view. So let's make sure that our actions uh, are set up appropriately so that when users cancel or update the subscription, you know, we make the right change to our payment table. So when those either of those events happen, do this workflow. So data, we're going to make changes to a thing, and the thing we're going to change is do a search for, and it's going to be a payment, and it's going to be Stripe customer ID. So it can't be current user because this is a back-end workflow. So you know it's not it's not as if the user is logged in and doing this thing. This is happening in the background, and you know. We need to be able to identify the right record to update. So <clears throat> Stripe customer ID equals request data. So this is the data that has been sent back as a result of one of those events happening. And it's going to be ID close. And remember, <clears throat> we just have one record for each customer. So first item. So let's change some fields. So we're going to change the last payment date because if they change 
from a monthly to an annual after a few days you know they've updated their, their payment date if you like so request data and uh, I think it's called period start so yeah object current period start let's change another field the payment frequency so if they move from a monthly to an annual we want to capture that so request data and the word that bubble so the word that stripe uses is interval so you can see object plan interval let's change the product id if they move from a monthly to an annual we want to capture that updated id so request data and it's the plan id so object plan id change another field we're going to change the status so request data start type in object status so you know this is this is a really fundamental one so if they cancel we want the user no longer to be active if they change the plan from a monthly to an annual all that's going to happen here is it's going to override active with active so that's fine we, we don't mind that happening change another field and then the subscription end date so of course you know, if they were in a monthly and then they switch to an annual you know, we want to reflect that updated end date in our database so request data start typing period and then current period end okay so I think that is everything so let's let's test it out so we are logged in as Bob so let's just go into our uh, table here so this one here Bob so he's on a monthly subscription he's active let's change Bob to an annual subscription so he's logged in uh, so Bob at test.com okay so I don't have the option at the moment so I just realized I actually canceled Bob's subscription to generate the event so I could get Stripe to talk to Bubble. So let's go back, log out, and let's just log in uh, someone completely new. So Mike at test.com. So he doesn't have a subscription, perfect. So he's got a monthly one. Let's subscribe him to this. So. I have used them before, so it's payment details are already there, so let's sub press subscribe. Okay, payment successful. Confirmation, navigate now. So let's just check our, um, our database. So we've got the payment here. Uh, Mike, he's on a monthly subscription, he's active. So we want to change Mike now to a annual user so let's click on manage subscription let's update plan let's select the yearly continue confirm okay so in stripe let's see what's happened so Mike there's his monthly he's now updated that to a, a yearly so there's the 400 pounds and then what is our application saying says so press refresh something's gone wrong ah sometimes things going wrong is good so let's just check our web hooks so if we click on events okay so that was successful so I've done something wrong in the back-end workflow Oh, ah, there we go. So <laughs> I'd actually put the wrong field in from, from Stripe. So the customer ID is not just ID, it is the object customer. So close that. So I am now confident that this will work. So uh, let's go back to monthly in our payments you'll see this monthly payment being made in uh, the portal let's update the plan let's change it to yearly 
confirm that was successful. Uh, let's refresh. So that 400 pounds is reflected in Stripe. And in our data, let's refresh. And there we go, yeah. So that has changed to a year. Uh, it's still shown as active. And the subscription end date is now for a year's time. Let's cancel his subscription now. So let's press cancel, cancel plan. So I want to see that reflected now in my bubble database, refresh. So this active is going to change to canceled, hopefully. And it does, perfect. So I've now got Stripe talking back to my bubble application. And if we check our list, there we go. We've gone through all the steps. So, you know, there's there's lot there's lots that you can do with payments in terms of uh, user experience. You know, my who are, who am I here, Mike? So if if I'm Mike and I cancel my subscription, when I go back to tutorial, the the link here, really I should have triggers for saying, hey, this guy is no longer a subscriber. Maybe log him out or take him back to the subscription page or take him back to the you know the login page, you know, whatever. So, you know, really think about uh, your security apparatus within your application depending on whether or not you know the user is an active subscriber or not. You might have like basic plans and premium plans, so the basic things still get in, but they can't see everything. So you know, really think about um, you know access to your application on the basis of their um, subscription status and you know you don't you don't want to mess up information around uh, payments so you know really really hammer the testing with this uh, product you saw with me how easy it was just to, like select the wrong field and doesn't work so just you know make sure that you're really comfortable with the information you're sending to stripe and the information that you're receiving and yeah, feel free to play around with those other events that we saw in webhooks. So there's different things that are happening and that will trigger information and then you can set up other backend workflows for other events happening. So you know, explore freely uh, in the test environment. You know, you cannot do anything wrong either in Bubble or in Stripe. So you know, feel free to, to go at it. So I hope you find that helpful. Uh, yeah, it's a bit of a longer lesson. It's a few, you know, really important steps to go through. Uh, but I hope uh, after having watched this, you, you know, feel a bit confident to give it a go. Uh, or if you've been following along, hope you've you know enjoyed seeing that pretend uh, money come through. You know, the thing is now get that app finished, get your your app monetizing, and yeah, when 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 that is the real thing, um, that will feel great. So. If you've got any questions or comments, put them in the comments below. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll check it every now and again and um, hopefully be able to help you. So thanks for watching. And just like that, you now know how to integrate Stripe to create your own paid subscriptions feature. As you can see, using a combination of both Stripe and Bubble, it's never been easy to bring this feature to life. If you found this video useful, I'd always recommend hitting that subscribe button on my channel. So that way you can be the first to know when I drop any additional bubble resources. But for the meantime, I just wanted to say a massive thank you for taking the time to watch this course. And I wish you all of the best on your own no-code journey.